municipalities to give elections they've done away with that it's completely gone so now what they're doing is they're consolidating all of the elections together on what's called election day everybody generally knows that even number of years we have elections on the first tuesday of november this will allow us to have elections every first two, tuesday of november so municipal elections school board elections and <coughs> soil conservations and any other public entities that want to join in can will have their elections on odd number of years and then uh, state county federal elections will be on even number of years uh, what this means is we'll have our elections on november the first tuesday of november and uh, the elected officers will take effect on january 1st which is kind of odd who wants to take office on the, on the first day of <laughs> the new year's but that's just the way it lays uh, if we opt into this and we have the option if we opt into the local um, the local elections act then they take over our elections and we're all good if we opt out then we still manage our elections on the same day uh, and it's still unclear whether we have how much support we'll get uh, have or lose based on that but from the looks of it most municipalities are actually opting in it eases tensions from me because I'm in the office I'm dealing with the public all the time I mean it's in the middle of budget season and unlike county clerks I'm in charge of a lot of different things whereas the county clerk they just focus on elections and public records and their duties are small although broad in terms of the, the quantity of duties but how, how spread out they are is, uh, is not as broad as how I'm spread out um, let me <coughs> explain why I think it's a good idea to opt in um, so we lose we actually lose a couple months so instead of taking office in March we would take office in January so those of us that are up in, in March of 2020 that's Adrian and Ernie, you guys would actually be up in November of 2019, which is next year. So the reason why I think it's good is it actually puts all the elections together at the same time that school school board, us, and the soil conservation, and eventually, I'm hoping, the uh, central New Mexico electric co-op, that would be like the greatest thing ever, but they have not opted in yet. Um, so the reason why that's good is number one, it's easier for people. Number two, it's greater turnout for all. So if 400 people show up to the municipal election and only 200 show up to the school board election, now you're showing up to the municipal election and you've got the school board on there. So obviously uh, turnout's gonna be greater for like those lower elections that people do not vote in. So that's gonna be better, I think. Um, the fact that the county clerk takes over, like I said, like he said, it takes away from, you know, it helps him, really gets pressure off of him. The county takes over. Um, eventually the county at Linda's the Linda's are talking about going to like print your ballots so basically when you go to vote in the future hopefully soon you will go you will tell them you know uh, you give them your name they will print your ballot right there they're gonna have a printer and they print your ballot what this does is this actually increases it actually helps greatly because like for instance um, it helps with the how do I explain that? Um, more polls, more early voting. Yeah, more polls, more things. So someone from Moriarty, if they're passing through Mountain Air on election day, they can vote in Mountain Air because they basically are passing through, they stop, they say I need a vote, 
and they print their ballot for Moriarty in Mount Air. So it, it changes like the dynamic of the whole entire election. It helps it, it makes it easier for everybody. So I'm thinking if we eventually do this, then eventually what's gonna happen is they're gonna go to the printed ballots and people can vote, let's say, I mean, let's say someone's in Moriarty and they need to vote in the municipal election for Moriarty. They could do it here, vice versa. We could eventually vote in Moriarty. If we're there all day at a conference or something, we can go vote for lunch for the Mountain Air election. So I, I think this is a great thing. Um, we do, you know, you do lose a couple of months of, of office. Um, I don't think that, you know, but anyways. And what else was I gonna say? Oh, the cost of it? Oh, yeah. uh, we spend thousands every two years on elections because of these printed ballots, rather than have it print on demand. I have to order, like this last election, I had no idea what to expect and didn't want to run out. So I ordered 600 ballots and I threw 300 of them away. So that, that's a, a cost associated with that. So it's, we're talking, I want to say, two to $3,000 for this last election that we had. What this does is we will pay the county clerk $250 a year, just straight up pay them. Now, the drawback of that is we don't get early voting. And I spoke with the Lindas about that last week, and she was unfamiliar with that part of it. it a lot of this is still ambiguous to even the county clerks and a lot of people. So uh, they're still fleshing out the, the kinks. But right now, I believe it's going to be a negotiation between us and the Lindas to uh, have them, do we pay them for the early voting, the, the workers, or... Yeah. Do they, and they, I, I believe we do get early voting, it's just not here. You would have to go to the county clerk's yeah. office. So that's what it means by you don't get early voting. So you get early voting, it's just not in the municipality. Yeah. But we would, if we paid, I believe we would get early voting. Right. Here. Right. Yeah, because we pay each poll worker. Right? <coughs> early voting, like bucks. I believe it's 200 bucks. Uh, in our municipality, I was an early voter, voting manager, so they come in and I, I managed it. But with the county, the state statute read that you can only pay poll workers $200. So that's either one day, and I'm not sure if that, I didn't really look into the whole, the two week long early voting session, but I'm presuming it may have been an early voting session as well, which isn't a lot of pay. But that's an, a question that we'll have to ask her, or the Lindos. Um, and, and yeah, they are going to print on, it's not even so much eventual. I believe that they have to go with this, but with this particular, election season, they have to switch over to print on demand, I think, but don't quote me that. I worked uh, elections last week with the lenders, that's what I can. So that takes tons of money. Yeah, I mean, we just on paper alone, like you said, you throw away ballots, this is when you print as you go, so. Yeah. How about absentee? Absentee will be the standard. Yes, yes. I believe you would mail your request to the county clerk, she would, your application, she would send you the application, then you send it back, the application, then she would mail you the ballot. It's the exact same process, but rather than coming through town hall, they would go directly to the county clerk. <coughs> this helps. The only thing that I think would make it perfect is if the call for because I think the fair elections are so big that um, if they had to come off, I think that would be like a game changer. Would, uh, would you describe that more like what's the possibility of that happening? So when we uh, we actually meet Juanita, Council and Juanita went to uh, uh, the guy that was sponsoring this bill and put it through, uh, De Soto, yeah. He um, was at in the and we went to a presentation of his. And um, I actually got him because as I am mean, assuming you were aware, I do not like the elections for the co-op. So um, I brought it up to him and he said that he was trying to get them on board and that they might have to go through the PRC to actually make that happen. So um, obviously they're not gonna automatically just say we're in. Um, as we would all hope, but uh, maybe through another revenue, another source that can make that happen. But just so I clarify why I hate the co-op election so much is because it's in one location for a three hour period and it makes zero sense. If it's in Corona, everybody from here all the way up to wherever the co-op ends on the has to go to Corona. It's absolutely ridiculous. And you have to have a certain amount and it's just, it's so, <coughs> I call it rigged, I shouldn't call it rigged, but it's so bad. That they it's benefit bad. from that. They benefit from that because there's no, uh, they have no one to worry about. They have, I mean, people aren't going to show up, people aren't going to get up on a Saturday morning. So I wonder why they would be willing to change. They, I don't think they would. No, they're not. Yeah. They would not. Yeah. 
But if they did this, wow, I think things would be better. <coughs> Any questions, comments, concerns? And that individual that was over there that we want to listen, has he gone before their board and do this happen? Who? Say that again? The individual that was over there in the stands at the workshop that we went, uh, has he approached him at one of their Oh, the co-op? I don't know what he's done. I, I think he's, I don't know how he's done it. He was at the Clark Institute, so I don't know if he did. I know he's aware of it, so I think he'll work that good time. Is this Daniel Yeah. <clears throat> Any other questions? Comments? Questions? Do we have a motion to adjourn from the <coughs> Make a motion to adjourn from the public hearing. I'll second. All right, I have a motion to adjourn from the public hearing. That's by Richard, a second by Ernie. Roll call, Richard. Four. Juanita. Four. Ernie. Four. All right, we are now adjourned from the public hearing. Call this meeting to order. This is the actual town council meeting. We have a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, Richard. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Here. 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 I have a motion by Juanita to approve the minutes from the other meeting held on October 16th. A second by Ernie Roll Paul Richard. Four. Juanita. Four. Ernie. Four. Motion passes. Approval of tonight's agenda for November 13th, 2018, regular meeting. I make a motion for approval agenda for November 13th, regular meeting. Second. 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 Four. Juanita. Uh, Four. Ernie. Four. Motion passed. Uh, Ernie, this motion is a little second. Approval of vouchers. Which has to be done at the Chief, are we, we're almost done in the police department, correct? As far as construction yeah. and so forth? Yeah, I think we, all we have is just the uh, monitors. Uh, <coughs> okay. 
more dust. <laughs> to approve the voucher list. The second by Bonita. Roll call, Richard. Four. Bonita. Four. Eager. Four. Eager. Four. 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 Voucher is approved. All right, approved. Uh, so we just have the public hearing on the Local uh, Elections Act. This is the approval of Ordinance 11 2018, opt-in to the Local Elections Act. Um, <coughs> Adrian, you were not here. I'll brief you in real quick. So uh, if we opt in, basically the county takes over local elections. Local elections basically become one election. So no more school board election, town election, soil conservation election, it's all one. It's at <coughs> November, the first Tuesday of November of eight, uh, odd number of years. So we would basically have an election every year on the first Tuesday of November. We would have the state and federal and all that on the even number of years, and then local on the odd number of years. What that does for you is you're actually up for election in 2020. And instead of your election being in March of 2020, it would be in November of 2019, which is next year. And you would, if you win re-election, um, you would take over uh, in uh, January 1st of 2020. <coughs> so you actually lose about two months time. Um, the reason why it's good is because it increases voter turnout. So basically, if you have like 400 people coming to the municipal election and only 200 to the school board election, obviously the school board gains some votes on that because they will be here already for the local elections. Um, <coughs> do you have any other questions? So that? Want to become, like, that right no, 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 no. No. I just want to, I was just kind of curious because I was going to see people talk, so I was like, I can't be affiliated with that as a federal employee. Mm -hmm. we do like that. No. It's just strictly taking over and consolidating into one, which would be in November of, of an odd number of years. And uh, like I was also mentioning, it helps because eventually they're going to go to printed ballots. So basically you go in, give your name, and they print your ballot right there. So um, for instance, if they go to that, we could like, if you're, you have a workshop in Moriarty that day, and you want to vote in the municipal election, they can print yours because you're in that county. So as long as you're in the county, you can vote for your municipal election. So it actually is a benefit for a lot of people. You still going to be like a four-year term. <coughs> mm -hmm. yep. yep. Everything would remain the same. The only thing is, and, and everybody loses. Everybody loses that time period because them two would lose at this time. But when we're up for election, instead of our election being in March, we would also lose that. So we would be up in November and then take office in January. So it's really no, you know what I mean? It's not like the first time they lose it and we work good. It's not. Well, I believe the additional benefit of that is that, that transition period after you uh, Mayor elect or council person elect, you have that time of uh, November and December to come in, speak with the staff, get a kind of abreast of what's the situation and the stand the state of the union, I guess you would say. And then when you start on January first, you'd be armed with a lot of information already had of her. That is very true. Okay. So this is the approval of that ordinance. Um, there has to be majority vote by governing body, which means at least three council members have to vote yes. I cannot be a tiebreaker in this particular context. All right. Against. Everybody's so serious. Amen. Vote. Who's that? Yeah, vote. I call. You make a motion. Okay, I make a motion to, to vote on the opt in for a local election act. Approval of ordinance, what is it, 11 2018? Mm -hmm. Okay. Check it in. 
Okay, I have an approval of <coughs> a motion on the court to approve the ordinance 11 2018, opt into local elections act by Ernie, a second by Richard. Roll call, Richard. Or. Juanita. Or. Adrian. Or. Ernie. Or. Well, that was easy. <laughs> I was. <laughs> Alcohol permit for event by Friends of Salinas Pueblo Mission. Passed. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 uh, Mayor, members of the council, for considering this request. If you could, uh, Paul, please. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. <coughs> uh, you want to worry, Paul? Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's the official document. <laughs> I'll try not to uh, blast your ears off. That's good. <coughs> Thank you. The, uh, the Friends of Salinas Pueblo Missions is a relatively new group. We were incorporated uh, one year ago this month, and we received our 501c3 status in January this year. So we haven't been around very long. Our sole purpose, as you can tell from May, is to assist uh, the Salinas Pueblo Missions National Monument. And uh, if you haven't seen this list before, there are five uh, parts of, it, of, of their mission that is education, interpretation, preservation, protection, and recreation. And again, our sole purpose is to assist uh, Salinas Pueblo Missions. Our very next event is going to be a symposium on December 8th, and it will be held at the Montana Mountain Art Council building from 4 to 7. This symposium is going to be uh, showing off to the public for the very first time a fossil that was found at one of the Salinas sites. And we have two goals for the symposium. Uh, the first will be to educate the public about this fossil, and then the second will be to raise funds so that we can build a permanent display case. Right now the fossil is uh, locked away in a uh, vault, basically, at, at uh, Salinas headquarters, and very, very few people have seen it. So we want to build a permanent display case so that it can be uh, accessible to the public at all times. So the uh, symposium, uh, again, it, it has two goals, education and fundraising. As a feature of the symposium, we'd like to offer uh, wine for sale by Aralis Wines, and that will be accompanying food that will, uh, our members of the uh, Fence of Salinas will be offering to the public. I'll be happy to take any questions. I don't see why the king's not going to be there. What was there? Uh, it's the same. <laughs> it's the same. They're, they're too far away. <laughs> so who's doing security? The town, the town who's going to provide security? Uh, we will have uh, licensed law enforcement, so we, we don't have a, uh, a contract yet, but uh, we have been uh, talking about that, so that's coming along. So why are you going to... Yes, I sent a, a memo to the mayor and the town council regarding I had a meeting with your county <coughs> And uh, <coughs> it was discussed that uh, based on the event, rather than take the patrol officers out of their normal patrol duties, that out, that would be considered an overtime event. So any security from 4 o'clock to 7, since they're going to have a, a, a line there, that we use one of our officers who's going to be off duty and use them for that event, thus the fact that their organization would reimburse the town for any overtime. And that's normally how it's been <coughs> in most other cities when they have events, they hire the off duty officers and it runs through the town. The town pays uh, the officer their overtime, time and a half, I think. But then the organization reimburses that. All that information was forwarded to the mayor and the town council. And he would be in complete uniform, right? He yes, would sir. be like a police officer. <coughs> yes, sir. And they would provide security because of the fact of the fossil and then also in case other people that don't are not part of the show up and there's going to be wine and it will be for that time. A couple of dollars. Is there any, any issues with the security of If any of you attended uh, one of the events of uh, uh, MMAC Center during Sunflower Festival. Morales Wines was there at that event, so they've been to our, our town before. Uh, nice people. They like to come here. So what are the hours of this? <coughs> It'll be 4 to 7, and uh, wine sales will be cut off at 6.45. Okay. Uh, I have a 
I make a motion to approve the firm for the event by the Friends of Selena's Revolution. Please. I second that motion. Second. 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 Second.
Everybody come oh, yeah. in. Everybody come in from Cruz mm -hmm. to Roswell. This is the center, right. and Albuquerque is only an hour away. So we have everything here to provide them: lodging, restaurants, the training. They don't have to go anywhere else and spend their money. They're, they're, so they're, 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 they're training animal control officers and. Enforcement officers. No, it's, no, just animal it's just animal control. I was going to make a comment on that. Uh, the reason why we sent Aguilar to this one is because there's like three or four of the classes was specific for animal control. The rest of it is on enforcement in general. So this is uh, <coughs> this is uh, like law like the law enforcement academy the light edition. Yeah, the light edition gives them exposure whether they want to be in this field and how to operate as a law enforcement officer. I asked because we've got in the network with the. Uh, a lot of mayors and council people from all over the state when that money program and if I could pass on information to oh, yeah. them for the for their municipalities maybe they can send people down here that'd be willing to do that knowing yeah. that this organization doesn't come to New Mexico or I mean anywhere close if you guys said you only come once a year yeah. okay you know what I mean so yeah maybe it would be good it would give us recognition it would bring in uh, uh, revenue in a way it's free advertisement because oh, it would, yes. cause we get it through the practice that's how I find out about it the fax machine yeah. and um, just imagine like the, the main Mount Nair going out to every single fax machine in every municipality yeah. in the west, yeah. southwest. Yeah. Where's Mount Nair? Oh, okay. Look that up and that's where it is. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of like a promotion in itself just to promote our name. Yeah, and they and it's advertised nationwide by them. They do all the advertising for us. So. I don't want to throw a wrench in this, but you know how many police officers we sent to training yeah. and they promised to stay here and adios goodbye. What is there anything that we're gonna have this code enforcer, this animal control accountable after we send them to this training, okay, they get their little certificates, we don't pay them enough and they go to all this place. Is there anything that they're gonna be held accountable for? Well, the applicants that I am aware of that have applied already for ACO are all from Mount Man. They're all from here. But it's a that's not a good argument. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, not, and here's why. Uh, that's, and here's why. <laughs> that's not a good argument. I've been here since, I don't want to throw it. I've been here since the year 2000. <coughs> How many people have come here before, well, me, because they weren't here, and say, we own a home? We've got a family here. This is the town that I was born and raised. What happens once we <laughs> send them to the academy? Yes, you told me, told us we don't pay for it, but we pay the 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 room or whatever to their salary, their insurance, and everything. They get certified. They go to Valencia County. They go to Bernalillo County. They go to wherever. They sit here right before us in our interview process and say, we're born and raised here. How many born and raised people have I seen out there that we send to the academy? Right now, without mentioning no name, I can mention three in the years that I've been here. I wanna, my question needs to be answered. How are we gonna help this? people account the way we can do that counselor is the, the same way that I propose for the uncertified officers is by making them sign a contract not you can't force them to stay but we can ask them to sign a contract that they're going to remain with this agency for at least two years if they leave the agency within that two-year period they would have to reimburse us for any training that we pay for i.e. If we said we're getting this train, we bring this free training here, <coughs> we're not paying anything. But if we say we if we had to, it was nine hundred something dollars, I think it was. By them signing this contract, they were saying, Okay, I'm from Mount Air, I'm gonna stay with you guys. And then a year later they said, you know what? I got my training, I want to go to Albuquerque, for instance. Okay, well you remember the contract you signed when you got hired? You have to reimburse us for that training because that training is part of your job. That's the only thing we can hold them accountable for civilly, but we can't force an actual individual to stay for two years. So that's how we reimburse and recoup that, mm -hmm. is that within that one year's time, if an individual stays with us for at least a year, 14 months at the max, we've already recouped that money that we already spent through his, through his or her efforts of doing their job. 
The Law Enforcement Academy, on the other hand, that training is mandated by state law and it's free. So yes, we do have to pay the benefits because that's all part of PARA and all that. But that's the way we counter that, is by having them sign the contract. Now, if they refuse and they say, well, you know what, I'll work for you guys, but I'm not going to sign any contract, I'll say, well, that's part of the stipulation. That is part of the conditions because we're investing a lot of money in you. And therefore, we need to know if you're going to stay here and, and be that person that's going to remain with us. That's the only way we can do it legally. Yeah, like in any job. I'm not just not saying police department. Oh, no. No, that can go I with think any job. Maintenance department they or any job. whatever. They need to be held accountable. If yes, we're sending it to this training, whatever it is, to clean whatever, you're getting trained for something or other where that's a feather on your hat. When you go to someplace else. Oh yeah, I, I agree totally on that, and and you're right. It just doesn't apply to law enforcement. It it can apply to any job that we have here. That if you're going to spend that kind of money, any basic training that is given to an employee is pretty much <coughs> given. Any advanced training, <coughs> that's when it starts costing the town some money. If I decide to send some of my officers to advanced training. That's not part of the basic. That's going to cost us money, but it has to be done because they have to get those yeah. advanced hours. That's how it works. But we can apply the same principle to other jobs as well. It works. Mm -hmm. It's just towns, <coughs> villages have never enforced it. They've done it, but they never enforce it. They just say, oh, yeah, I'm good riddance with this guy. We don't want to do it. Want and they don't pursue it when they actually could have. Mm -hmm. That's how. That's why you never see that law. It's, you don't see it in case... Uh, case law or the courts because the, the town's just saying, ah, it's too much hassle. Yeah, let's get them out of here. Just but in this situation, house. since you feel so strong about it, enforce it. Let's do it. Well, we need to enforce it. Like I said, I've been here many a years. Yes, and people come and go. We train them. I'm repeating myself. We train them. Just because they're getting to our $3 down in Estancia, they're going to Estancia. And they're, but we are the ones that are out the money sending them to this training. Oh, absolutely. Uniform calls yes. in itself is expensive, but we have to provide that as part of the employment. Mm -hmm. But I understand your, your concern on that. That's my recommendation on that. Be just to apply to everybody mm -hmm. and actually go after them. Yeah. We might end up losing at the, at the end, but at least they know that we mean business. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. You have a question? Moving on. Approval to purchase uh, police and fire department vehicles. Police chief one way. I want to give you the radios that our department is currently using. This one. This is the radio that we are currently using. They're about 15 years old. This is the new radio that I'm proposing. It's the Apex 4000. Motorola, and I'm glad the chief fire department is here because I talked to him in depth about it. I talked to the mayor about uh, doing a total reorganization with this agency. One of the main things that we got to look for is communication for the officers. Right now, we cannot hit with those C20 uh, 1250s, which is the, the little one right there. We cannot hit from here to Kapia, which is the repeater, unless we're bouncing off our own repeater, which is a mountain air. The, H, uh, the APX 4000 is a digital analog converter. So therefore, whatever system we are trying to get, it automatically <coughs> goes to the system, whereas the other one is strictly, is strictly analog. Under the new Department of Homeland Security, uh, under the Inoperability Act, what they're doing is they're urging all law enforcement, fire, EMS personnel to go to the digital because by 2019, they're going to start mandating it. And those agencies that do not comply are going to be left in the cold. Therefore, you won't be able to talk to state fire, you won't be able to talk to your local unit, because the system is already going to be outdated. The digital is the way to go. This radio provides that capability, because it, it, it goes through both uh, uh, frequencies. According to the contract, 
which I gave uh, Dennis to provide to you. We have a formal <coughs> proposal from Motorola Company, and there's two options. We can go three years on this lease program, so in other words, it's a lease. At the end of the lease, we own the equipment. What they're asking right now for whether we choose option one or option two is $29,445.99. So you think about it, you go, my goodness, that's a lot of money. Now well, these radios, this radio in particular, the APX4000, normally runs for $3,200 a piece. They're going to give it to us for $1,800 under a law enforcement discount. So we're saving money there. <coughs> the terms, which I suggested, would be the five-year acquisition because it has the lowest APR rate of 7.6% as opposed to the other 9.2. That can change depending on where we sit when we run our credit because we have to do a credit app with, with this corporation. So if our credit were in the AAA standards, how, how the standard and poor, our APR will go even lower. What we're looking for just in this term right now is we're looking at um, um, monthly payment of uh, 591.44, which will be split evenly between our agency, the fire, and police, because they're also going to get radios. They're in need of radios. As you can see, we're in need of radios. The handhelds are just not working the way they used to. Back in the days, they were probably real good. Now, we're, we're falling behind the time. Each month, it, it gets more complicated. Um, I think based on that term, we extend it over a five-year term, we don't have to plug down $29,000. All we have to do is put in $591 a month, split with two, uh, between two departments, and it provides the equipment that's needed by the fire and it's needed by police. It, it's something that we have to really look at because if we don't start now, what's going to happen is that we're going to fall by next year and then we're going to be trying to catch up to the, to the trend and that in itself is going to do is that they're going to up the prices because when, when there's a need, there's always a higher cost. Right now we're getting in right at the end before it's going to be mandated. So I think it, it's a good proposal. It comes with a three-year, on this five-year term, it comes with a three-year warranty, fully covered. Anything happens to this radio, we lose it, we drop it, we burn it, it gets run over. We, all we have to do is we do a course of police report, and it gets replaced for nothing. They'll give us another one. <coughs> it's going to on the product. Uh, the uh, individual that I'm dealing with is local, and he is provided me with all the information and all the support once approved they told me it'll take less than two weeks to get that equipment to us once it's all said and done has it been tested yes we've been testing that radio uh i got it today because they have to reprogram i hit off that little radio from zuzak i was coming in from albuquerque and i hit off of that and tcso picked me up very clearly and I got into Moriarty, I did more testing. Milton picked me up here on that radio. I was using that little radio. Now, depending on where you go, the closer, of course, that we are to our repeater, which is here in Mountaineer, the better we're going to get a reception. We went out to the hot spots today, the dead spots by Abo and, and this area, and it came in a little squelchy, but they still heard us in, in, at, at the dispatch center. So once we... And in normal circumstances, with the old radio, they didn't hear you at all. Oh, no. You didn't hear nothing. I, not even on the joke. Yeah, we can't even talk to each other. The good thing about this radio, it's got all the channels. Uh, they'll program it for us for free. We usually charge. And they'll put in all the frequencies for fire. They'll give them all the frequencies that they need to, to have. Of course, our tag channels, which is that way we can talk when we're at sea, <coughs> provide us with all our regular channels to mo to monitor state police, sheriffs, uh, they'll even program Moriarty, Estancia, whatever we want in there, they'll program it. Did you and say they'll put on a training? Pardon? You'll put on a training? That'll work here? 
Oh, these ones right here. Yeah. The yeah. Well, oh, yeah. Network, yeah. They, they, they told us if we, if we want, they, they'll come in, the sales guys will come in with their text, and they'll show us. Uh, we talked to Ben about it, and he said the, these radios are, are pretty good. Now, there's other radio companies out there that are trying to sell us. There's Kenwood. There's uh, another company after that. It's part of Kenwood, but uh, EF Johnson. I think it's EF Johnson. They, they make really expensive radios. For the money, I think this would be the best bet to start out with. Instead of outright doing $29,000 and then six months later you say you don't work. You say, <coughs> if any time during the contract, if we feel that this is not going to work and we want to upgrade to another radio or something like that, we have those options of, of moving in, in the contract. What does county use? County's got the 1250s, which is the, the little tiny one. That's mm -hmm. what they're using. We would oh, be really? the first in this area to go to that APX digital. Because all these other radios are all analog. It's already outdated. And Philip, yours would come out of the fire protection fund? Yeah. Yeah, my time. I know it looks like a lot on paper, and I mean, it's a lot of money, don't get me wrong at all. Like, it is. But when you break it down monthly, and split between the two, I mean, you're looking at about $2,400 a year. It's worth it. <laughs> between it's the worth two. It. When your house is burning, it's good. We can talk to each other. Because uh, seriously, a lot of times we can't even talk to dispatchers. I can't even talk to this guy across town. Yeah. Those radios are they're horrible. We have more trouble. In fact, the further we get away from out here, the better those other ones work. Yeah. But they're pretty bad. And like you said, they're going to be obsolete, and then we're going to really be hurting. To have to use that other one. And you've done, have you done research on the other one? Uh, yeah, I've done a lot. In fact, when we approved in the summer for me to buy some radios, you know, I only had this, I approved this, that, some us, I think 4,000, I was just going to get what I could get. They wouldn't even talk to me. Really? They wouldn't even call me back because that's not enough money for them to even open their door. <laughs> so I didn't get any radios off of that. I spent that money on other things because I, out of two, three companies, no one would even. Unless you go the route like this, they're not even going to go. Which is kind of horrible, I thought. That it is. But that's that's how they make the money. Because I tried the same thing. I said, hey, let's uh, go with just five radios. They wanted close to 15000 one company. And I said, I'm going to spend 15000 just for five radios, as opposed to 15 radios for 29 And we each split it. Well, you have about what six seven individuals i think we'll have about two extra radios between us that in case one of them goes down or something we have we have back yeah, and then the old ones we'll keep we're not going to get rid of them motorola is a pretty good product not as good as the feds they they, they have the good stuff but those things you're talking about five thousand six thousand dollar radios i think for the bank for what for our area for what we need to upgrade our system for public safety, I think this would be probably the best viable option to go in. And County and, Fire has some of those yeah, already, County. and they do very well. <coughs> Is that, a, does that price include accessories like antenna, lithium battery, every chargers, everything? Yeah, yeah like chargers. cars, you get the, you guys, is it gonna come with the car chargers as well? Not, not car chargers. That's these radios will come equipped as they stand with the charger and an extra battery. Now, if we want to have like those stack uh, battery chargers, well, those are like about two thousand dollars. I said now, so they'll give us the, the the home chargers that we can have in. We can put in the car, or we can put in the desk, and then and we'll charge up. Now the mic. Yeah. If we want a mic, then that's a little extra. Uh, cost there if you go for the mic option. <coughs> Here's the problem that I found out with mics. If the mic doesn't have an antenna, it's going to be worthless, especially for the area that we work at. So the best thing to do is to have that just the way it sits when the officer is talking, he's talking actually into the radio itself. Because the mic takes away your transmission <laughs> that, that distance unless that, mic, that microphone speaker has an antenna attached to it. It's the only way you're going to keep the transmission that's going. Another option is, uh, I think, uh, Freddie, you told me that we had some vehicles that had some boosters in the unit. I don't know if, that, if they The repeaters. The repeaters yes. in the car that help 
when you're talking on these uh, uh, walkie-talkies, it goes out the car and it boosts up to the uh, repeater, which is not there. But these are powerful enough to not need that. That, that of course, would cost a little bit extra more money for us to have those built-in repeaters in the units. These are probably the best option we have right now. Uh, I checked into the Kenwoods and it was just too much money. And the county generally goes with Motorola, so yeah. they generally have programming software, so if we need to program, Ben can program them at Motorola. If we buy other than Motorola, Ben can't really help us out programming, which costs more after those it's about three years. It's about $155 per radio yeah. program. What's the lifespan of these? Well, the HT 1250, that reader right there is about over 15 years. This one right here is designed to go at least 20 with proper care, you know, right. changing the batteries, of course. Um, but I'm talking like technology-wise. Technology-wise, that is the feature for, for okay. these radios because they're di it's convertible. So we're not getting something that in three years we're like, oh, well, now they're not doing digital. We're doing yeah. something else. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the digital is where it, we want to be because the inoperability act that's being imposed by FEMA and being imposed by DHS is requiring that because, I mean, right now, state police and all these other eight big agencies are all digital and some of them are encrypted. This is not encrypted. That's a little extra money if, if you go to encryption. But it's digital. That means that we can talk to these other agencies that are already that we work with just by flipping the switch because now we're on the same frequencies and so forth. Any questions? Do we still have the repeater at the park? That that would be the mom air repeater, yes yeah. sir. <coughs> Do you have to upgrade any on that? Something to have to I spoke these? to the guy on that and they said they want to come out. I don't know if, if I can get him. I'm trying to get him to do it for free, but I don't know if they'll charge me a service fee. Because I told him, I said, we have a repeater. And I would like to check it out before we do this to make sure that, that it's compatible. Because if it's going to cost a lot of money to upgrade that, then these are going to be not that worth investment. So I have to make a decision. I have to get <coughs> your approval. So if we approve these, are you going to purchase them immediately or are you going to wait until that's done? I'm going to wait. Okay. If, I, if I just get the approval, I will wait until we clear it and make sure that that our repeater is compatible with this and we don't have to do any special upgrades. But right now, as we're told, Torrance County can hear us on their repeaters and we're bouncing off of theirs because we're bouncing off of our repeater here. So it looks like it's working, but uh, we want to verify. Money wise? Yeah, so sure. let's say from a budgetary perspective, don't look at it so much as $29,000 we're getting hit right now. Yeah. We're not, we're only getting hit $7,097 a year for five years. So, law enforcement protection fund recovery. And fire yeah. 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 yeah, that's fire protection fund. That's easier to swallow. That's, yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. When you look yeah. at that 591, yeah. it's less than $300 a month for each, yeah. each of your <laughs> that's, that's an easy, that's an easy, yeah. So from a budget perspective, it ain't gonna blow our budget. Any other questions? I was going to say, since you're there looking at, you know, I was looking to accessories because, you know, my truck, I carry four extra batteries, I carry an extra radio, I carry extra antenna because if you don't have communication, you're getting in the water, so I was, you know, if you're there, you might as well look into accessories as well. Mm -hmm. I can, I can add that and um, see if they, if I can get them to throw it in. They're, they're really, right now, they're willing to bargain because they know that, that everybody wants to go to these and the more radios we have to bargain with, we have a platform. Like the chief said, one radio, two radio, they don't even want to hear it. Fifteen radios plus maybe additional ones, a bit uh, more accessories. Then we can start calling and saying, hey, well, you know, we're, we want to do this, but can you help us out with this? Can you do this for us? All we can do is ask. All we can do is ask. Uh, in the future, can we look at maybe getting the maintenance department ready instead of cell phone? I know at one time they had... Uh, <laughs> I believe the reasons the company needs because yeah. they could be called out for a fire to turn off utilities and and that's the big thing right now I think that the reason why maintenance knows a lot about the fires is because Carrie and Carl or do you guys get a call 
Did you guys get a call? No. Nope. It's really Gary and Carl, isn't it? It should be getting one from Usually, special. Today. Usually it's Carl. Yeah. Which Carl gets from Gary. From Gary, right. Before we had radios, we were the first responders to kill fire. And that's the way it should be because if, 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 if they have gas, you have to be there. So Maybe about, it's been to where we're not the first responder by that time something very <coughs> I have been asking for radios for a while and nothing been delivered. Do you guys think Wow, well, that's what I was gonna say. Do you guys think <laughs> that, that's do you guys do, do you guys need all members to have a radio or would it be simple to have the on call person have a radio? Because they have two extra the last time that we talked about this was that at least if we could get one that the person on call would have that, uh, then, you know, I'd be okay with that. I'd see the supervisor and the one that yeah, actually that's like true. Yeah. And, and, and if we have two extra, we could get money from the gas yes. to pay, pay the monthly for that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and it wouldn't be that much because, I mean, 591 divided by 15. Uh, well, what was the reason they went off the radio? They just little by little took us off of it, and then at, uh, at one point there, they didn't want us on the same frequency as uh, Estancia, because they say we're not allowed to be on it, which we never spoke on it anyway. But we we wanted it because of the fires and stuff. And like David said, <coughs> when we didn't hear that fire, by that time we've already been at the fire site, we already pulled the gas meter out, and we'd be out of a firefighter's so way. And but, uh, now it's like, I, I have not been to one fire in this town that I haven't had. They haven't been there, so I will say yeah. they're always they're yeah. always. Yeah, yeah, but always but having that initial happen. quick call, but I you guys have never not been there, so they, you guys actually assist us in a lot of ways. So they're a big help to us. Yeah. But having them actually having to tone out a little quicker yeah, actually, would help them. Yeah, we did have two, and that would work out good. So uh, then I have this question. Um, do do would they get a frequency of their own? Yes. Yeah, we can we can program the radio for to for them to have the main frequency and then a, a tap like a just a car to car like a car to car where they could talk by themselves and then on these main radios we would also have their channel so the police and fire would have their <coughs> channel so if we have to talk and we just switch. That's, that's all that we could do. Their channel. channel. You know, or their call for the well, fire or... Yeah. At that point, they could probably actually get a tow route. I think, just, yeah. I think your program was that with our railroad, you don't step on us and we don't step on you. But you can have a roaming channel where I can hear you and right. call you. Yeah. Turn out to the same thing. Channel, you go to scan and, yeah. and you get everything where you can just stay in your frequency. If you're on the road, you're out, you're monitoring what? 50 so, or 36 out here, we were 84, 72, yeah. 72. You can have different channels that are monitored and things like that. So that you guys can hear it. Yeah. Yes, sir. At this finance charge, you're looking at $40 per radio. So, per month. So, you know, you get five, um, so that's 200 bucks, you get seven or whatever. I think we really should, I, is it possible to go back to them and say, can you give us a quote for 18 radios? Yes, sir. Easy. Make the more, the more we give them, the more they're going to go down if, in price. If they if they get their own frequency and they can use it, I don't see it. I mean, instead of having to look for the person to call and say, "Where's Carl?" Hey, Carl, you know, I say. You can also put a base at the at the town hall to where you can call them out. Yeah. Yeah. We used to do that. I remember having to call you guys on the radio. Yeah. 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 I think that. Um, what, how they explain it is the more, like anything else, when you buy in bulk, it's always cheaper. So the more radios we get, the more stuff, it forces them to go lower because now they have to break down. I mean, just the 15 radios, <coughs> if I was just buying one, $3,200, that's a lot of money for one radio. When we went 15, that's when they said, we'll give them to you for 1800 or whatever the price, I think it's in there. But they, they actually gave us a big discount because we're buying more. So yeah, if we ask him, do you want three so more radio, base radio? It's definitely up to council, but we have another meeting in exactly one week. Yes, sir. I think maybe if you can go back, get a quote for 18 radio. Yes, sir. And look at the accessories, like Councilman Padilla said. Yes, sir. Um, let's try that route. I mean, maybe we'll get a better deal, and we get maintenance involved as well. Okay. Can you look at on some of the accessories, the option of buying the accessories outright, so the finance and 
It so says it won't, won't be on this. So it won't be on the finance yeah. charge for five years. Because some and of the accessories may be cheap enough we can buy it right in the right. finance. Yes. Oh, okay. I would rather do that. Yeah. Okay. And then also uh, the repeater thing. If we can try to get that, try to get them out, hopefully. Okay. I can do that. Yeah, they're, they're just waiting on us, you know, to to formalize that. But, you know, I wanted to present this so that we would get a big, bigger picture. I was hoping at the first time that of, of doing it with David, you know, getting the maintenance guys in there. But then I was told that they didn't need radios if they were on cell phones, so that's why I didn't include them. But it, it makes sense to do it in three departments, three ways. Again, what I like about the radio is, I mean, I'm, I'm not the most type to be on the radio just to listen. <coughs> The thing is that I like the radios is like like Richard said, supervisor because we're on call twenty four seven, you know, if we're around. Uh the maintenance who's on call twenty four seven, you know. So if we hear a tone like we used to with the other radios, then we listen and, and it'll say structure fire at such and such. That's that's our main concern, is structure fire. As far as talking and all that, you know, it's not really necessary. Uh, however, like you said, you know, uh, that, you know, where we can communicate with you guys or with whoever's on call or whatnot, you know, I like that. It's all tied in. Right. Because they're all tied yeah, in. It's public safety. But if you're, if you're scanning a lot of times, you'll get a lot of info before you ever get told. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You already know something's going going on in a certain area. Then in the beginning, we were getting that. Uh, Calls from the uh, estancia or from the East dispatch, Coast. and then also <coughs> we're calling. And that's and what also. you need. You need dispatch yeah. because for whatever reason, sometimes you guys yeah. might be too busy calling the others, and then we're down the line. And by that time, and, and our, our deal, well, used to be that we're trying to get to that gas meter or whatever, and plug it up and whatever before firefighters got there. That way, we're not on their way or whatever, you know. So I think, um, I don't know what you guys want to do, but if you guys want to table it till next meeting and then we can get that stuff done, get an extra poll. Now I was going to say, is this the standard kind of? I know, I don't know if there's other options, but a lot of people are doing crap at work, so I, I carry the longer one, and a lot of people like the seven ones, but it's kind of, that kind of helps get out as well, but I don't know if there's other options. Well, that's the standard antenna that comes with that radio for police. Now, they do have the long extenders, like when you're out there, like almost like a whip. Yeah. That would obviously cost more. <coughs> that's that's what they're putting on this radio for, for the standard police package, kind of. I mean, we can go with a shorty if we want, but that's... No, I, I know I don't like the shorty. I like the long Yeah, yeah, we want. I mean, I mean, we, I mean for us, if we have to be more long. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's a bottle. Yeah, but that one is about uh, the standard right <laughs> now for that radio and that. But yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be sure to the rest of the for the accessories, for the uh, maintenance. I'll just put it all in one and then resubmit the, the, the proposal and then they'll, they'll have all your answers. I'm just saying, because if you're out in April, maybe you just need that other antenna to get out. Maybe getting a second antenna thrown in for three. Yeah, there you go. Hey, we're buying all this stuff, Quimming. Can you help us out? <laughs> Look into the mics, too, just yes. just in case, because with us, there's there's loss and there's uh, just damage when the guy's out there pulling his packs out and talk all the time. And, and something's, something's urgent. You set it down, you drop it, you lose it, break it. Whereas if you have it fixed to your belt, or wherever you have it with the clip, and you're talking with your mic here, you're never really losing your your back set. It's not off your person. That's a that's a. I think it's a. A lot of a lot of agencies have gone away from that <coughs> because of the fact that if you get in a fight, they can use the cord to wrap around you. On the fire, they get hung up on stuff. Yeah, they and they get. And we hung have up. our our gear has a pocket right here. Yeah. That you're instead of like you're saying with our belt clip. Yeah, sure. Our fire gear has a pocket. That's right. <laughs> And that I had one with that, and it gets hung up on. Yeah, they have they have yeah. microphones that are Bluetooth that are actually connected to your phone or some way, and then you can move it around and it's wireless. That's but those are expensive. Yeah. But I'll look into all the accessories, yeah, you know. and uh, we'll go with that. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions? Any comments? Can we make a motion that we take over until next week until we get 
all the information that is required for us to make our decision. Okay. One motion by Juanita Taylor. A second by Richard. Roll call, Richard. Four. Juanita. Four. Hader. Four. Ernie. Four. Motion passes. Thank you, sir. All right, actually stay there because the next item is you as well. Approval of changes to police department advertising. Now, is this pertaining to the, uh, the submission of the uncert certified officers? Yeah. Case? So what this basically does is actually gives a a definite salary or a definite amount on the and I didn't bring my second unfortunately. I um, on the uncerts, so the non certs would be starting at thirteen dollars an hour to start, and then upon uh, <coughs> completion of the certified uh, of the class, the New Mexico law enforcement, they would then move on to the certified police officer grade scale, which that is $17 to start um, during the six-month probation, step increases up to 21, um, starting page based on experience. So if we get someone that, so that works in two ways. Obviously, if it's a, if it's a person that's uncertified and they go get certified, they're going to start at 17, but let's say someone comes from, you know, Albuquerque, APD, and they want to be an officer here. I mean, we wouldn't start them off at 17, obviously, we can start them off at you know, anywhere from 17 to 21, based on their experience. Um, another thing that this has in it that um, I know is always a uh, <laughs> argument, so we will get right like to it, is the take-home units. Um, uh, being able to take your home, take home your unit within a 50-mile radius of town, um, that's the two main changes that I, that I saw from the prior advertisements that we put out. Also, uh, and I, I don't even know if I told you this, Chief, um, on the un, on the non-certified, I took out the um, uh, bonus. I, I don't, uh, us sending them to the academy, I think is bonus enough. Um, we're starting their career. So, as Dennis mentioned, for the uh, regular police officer, if they got hired on as a police officer already certified, they have a bonus of $3,000 which would be $1,500 bonus at the end of the six month probation, and then $1,500 at the end of the one year anniversary from that anniversary. So it would be at six months, and at 18 months, they would get the, uh, uh, 1500 Yes, sir. I believe those were the major changes um, that were done from prior, from prior. Any questions? I know we're going to be talking about the take-home unit, so let's jump right into that. So, I'm just kind of curious, you know, we said in policy in place not to take home any vehicles, so now the units are going to be taken home, right? Yes, I have approached the mayor on it and I said to ask you, when was this decision made for them to take their cars home? Yeah, yeah I, I was just kind of irritated by that because it wasn't even, like brought up to council. This was like, you know, we find out after the fact, people are coming up to me and like, well, you know, this needs to be approved by council first, and I'll just do whatever you want, thank you all, because in the past it was being abused. So that's the whole reason why we put this take home policy in place. I don't know, to me that's just kind of a, a slap in the face to me, it's the way I go. Because we are the governing body, and as a governing body, we make that decision for them not to take their home. They they will come to a point and uh, leave the personal, go do their duty, come and go. And I uh, have to apologize. So uh, <laughs> I'm the one that uh, helped with that decision. Um, the reason why I made that decision is I, I my my thought process, and I'm going to explain it. You may agree with it. You may not. We have a new chief coming in. I wanted to kind of give him the authority to do what he saw fit to make the department what it needed to be. And uh, that was a decision that, you know, we was okay with. And basically, you know, I don't want to, sometimes I feel like, and, you know, I was, part of, I was part of it too, but sometimes I feel like we hold the strings too tight and then that's what kind of causes some 
some issues. So I wanted to loosen up those a little bit. I wanted to give them the opportunity to make those decisions. Um, I see where it, where it would, where it would uh, step on your toes, and I would probably feel the exact same way if I was in your position. And I, I take full responsibility for, for them being able to take the units home. And you guys have the ability to change that. Um, you guys please. Yeah, I mean, taking home a, a unit is a, it's a privilege, right? So even when I see vehicles on a lot, big vehicles on a lot, when I see, you know, reports of officers smoking in vehicles, and, you know, when I'm seeing, like, you know, I don't know, not just you guys, but you know, like your units being wrecked and not reported, or after the fact, I feel, I don't know, that kind of just kind of irritates me. Can I kind of comment on that? Um, I, I totally agree with what you're saying, sir. Here, here's my take on this. As in my career, each agency that I've worked for has always had a take home car program. And has always been the most contentious part of any city council meeting. Always. The reason why is because officers do abuse it. They do abuse it. Some agencies allow take home units certain radius. The standard right now is about 50 miles. If you look throughout the state, it's 50 miles. The benefit to a take-home program is that it's used as an incentive to retain officers. When you have an agency that can pay way up here and has hardly any benefits, to draw those officers, you've got to give them something. And take-home unit is one of those incentives that a lot of agencies use. State police use it, San Bernalillo, APD. Just about every city around in this region has a policy. The way you control it is you advise your officers. This take-home unit is a privilege. It's not a right. It's a privilege that the town, the village, is giving you. Don't mess it up. As I understand as what Councillor uh, Adrian said, is that it's been abused in the past. If anything else, anything gets abused. But here's my, my counter to that. Why punish the persons that are not abusing it to those that have abused it? That is the way management works. Because if you punish everybody for somebody else's doing, you're taking away that privilege from that individual that it takes pride in, in keeping the unit clean, keeping the unit maintained, because that is part of our responsibility when we're assigned these units. We have to keep them maintained. So if one of my officers abuses it, the disciplinary action falls upon that officer, and privileges are as such. You get a written reprimand first time. Second time, a little bit more serious, you get that unit taken away from that individual, and you punish that individual and say, hey, for the next 60 days, your take-home privileges are gone. So now that officer is going to think twice about saying, well, I, all I have to do is just change the oil. I, I, I shouldn't have went to the market when I could have. I've explained to the officers that the take-home card program is as such official business. Some agencies allow, allow you to use that, that unit to do shopping, go to the movies. Well, those are the big departments that have the big insurance that have that capability. We don't. I've instructed my officers to say, this is the unit you use to work. You go from here to your house. You gotta go to court, you go to court in that unit. You don't wanna take that unit, you still gotta go to court. But either way, <coughs> each time that officer's in that unit, they're calling in to dispatch saying, I am in service. I'm going to court, I'm going to the DA's office, official business. We can justify that because of the fact that that officer is officially on duty. As police officers, we're on duty 24-7. <coughs> Some officers choose to say, nope, I'm going after my 10 hours, I'm, I'm not a cop, I'm taking out my badge and gun. <coughs> well, that's your deal. But if you're driving a mark unit, I've instructed these officers, you will be in uniform. That is one of the requirements. You will take care of that unit. You will not abuse it because it is a privilege, not a right. 
And it's also a drawing factor for officers that we're trying to recruit right now. Because right now, competition is high. A lot of people are very surprised that we're offering $3,000 bonus. We're only $2,000 below APD. We offer five. Santa Fe took away the bonus. They used to have a $10,000 bonus sign up, take home cars, everything. And they drew so many people that it, they just kind of slowly, to save money, pushed it aside. I agree with the mayor on the non-certified officer. Get rid of the bonus. We're already giving you that training, like Juanita said. We're giving you something. We're giving you a job. We're giving you training. And on top of that, we're providing all the equipment that you need. That's the way to do it. We have to change our trend. We have to change our market. It, it, it's, it's not a business. It's government. But in order for us to compete in today's world of, of employment and draw the resources <coughs> here, we have to offer something. And, and one of those benefits is an incentive. It is a take-home car unit. Now, the 50-mile radius, 50 miles goes to where? Albuquerque is just right on the border of that. The Lynn, Las Lunas, they're within the 50. Moriarty, Edgewood, within the 50. So how do we justify that? We justify that when we have to call out an emergency, that officer is going to respond in emergency mode, what we, you know, what we call as code three, light siren and all that, to come here. Are we going to ask those officers to respond from their house, put on their uniform, get in their personal vehicle, which is insured by them, not us, and tell that officer to drive over here for an emergency and they get in an accident, we're liable. So, so you're telling your officer to drive code three all the way from Alcorn? That's what I'm hearing? Well, if they're called for an emergency response, to respond to a uh, town emergency, if, they're, if I needed him here and it's an emergency and it's, it's classified as an emergency, they have, they have that authorization to run code three from that because they're, they're covered under the Safe Pursuit Act. If they get in an accident and they go beyond what, I mean, we still gotta follow the law and we're responding in that mode. We still gotta look at our intersections. We gotta give way and all that. But the thing is, what I'm saying is that if we make a call out, my officer lives right on the cusp of Las Lunas, and I say, I need you here. We have an emergency in this town. That person is authorized to drive code three at that point, if it requires that. It's not like uh, I'm in a fire, we're gonna have our fire response people here. That's a given, we're gonna have that response. So therefore, if I need them for something, it's not gonna be a code three situation. That's gonna be at the discretion of, of myself. But if it's an emergency, emergency where the town needs us now, that's how we justify it. Because if we ask that officer to respond in that fashion from their home, which is going to take them 45 minutes or more through traffic and all that, and they get in an accident, they're in uniform, we're responsible for, for their actions because they are on duty. Yeah, I, I mean, I just have a hard time with that because I have, you know, in the past, minor officers drove me off the road <laughs> coming 100 miles an hour. I mean, that's, I don't know, I don't think that's right. I mean, first of all, it's, you know, you got to think of your own safety. And you got to think, you know, just make it here to town, you know? I mean, you're putting a lot of people on Oh, oh no, I, I totally agree with you. I have been in many pursuits myself in my career. And fortunately, I've never gone into an accident with anybody. And, and, that's, and you've seen the news, officers running code three in the city, and they don't see a, an individual that runs a red light and you kill somebody. Well, it's going to happen. But you've got to take those precautions. And I agree with you. I mean, you're coming, you're a citizen, you're, you're, you're driving down the road, and the next thing you see is behind you, you see all these lights coming at you, and then here comes this vehicle flying by you. That is why you employ officers that are mature, and you tell them, everything applies here. Remember the Safe Pursuit Act of when you're in pursuits, because it applies to emergency driving. We have to go through that emergency EVOC training. That's part of our requirement. They teach you all that. And you've got to have some kind of maturity. Now, if that individual negligently abuses that and causes an accident or causes something in our name, meaning the town of Mountaineer, then that person can be liable. We can hold that person liable and say, you caused this accident, 
Therefore, the town should not be held to a tort claim because you're the one that negligently went beyond the scope of your duties. Scope of duties is very important in this, in this profession. We are trained to do use of force. We're trained to do certain acts. When we go above that, our training, above our training and implement our own biases, or I think this guy needed to, a little bit of this, we have gone beyond the scope. It applies the same thing as emergency driving. It's called EVOC. The officers are held to a higher standard. That's why we have to go through our training to justify driving an emergency vehicle. And how often do they go to that? <clears throat> that that training is required once training. a year, just like the DDC course, which is part of the town responsibility for municipality. We have to do EVOP training. That's once a year. That's part. It's not part of our biennium. It's additional training because we have to show an instructor who is certified by the state that we can operate an emergency vehicle, doing backing, parking. They put you through a skid test, how to handle the vehicles and turn. They do all that. It's it's about 10 hours long. And you have to pass that course. Take a test. Have our officers gone through it? Our officers have not gone through that because I am surprised. Because that is a mandatory training. And it hasn't gone through because the prior administrations haven't either known about it or they just weren't aware of it. I guarantee you it's, it's going to be done under my administration. Because I'm with the agent. I'm driving down the road. I see one of our police officers go, shoom. And when they get here uh, to Mount Mayor, they're, they're like, and you find it, what was the emergency? Well, you know, minus lights and and you see a police officer here, you're on the mark that's almost getting killed because you're trying to move away from that individual. Yes, ma'am. And now they're coming. Now, so, take that take that instance and you multiply it in a congested urban area, and it gets even worse. That's why they made the law move over to the right if you see an emergency vehicle. That's the law. Now, if any of our officers here abuse that, where they're driving in excess of the posted speed limit and they're not an emergency call. That's disciplinary action. Right off the bat. It ain't going to be why. It's going to be, this is the report. This is how we got it. Why were you driving at 60 miles an hour and ran this individual off the road when you just went to a larceny call? Or oh, just you, to say You have to eight. justify it. But I'm thinking here, I haven't <laughs> seen... I don't know, being the, the new chief, I have not heard of any of these officers that are currently on the department of doing that, but I can assure you this, it won't happen under my administration. Mostly because right. that training, <laughs> <laughs> well, I've heard of some things, but I'm just now, kidding. <laughs> no, I, I wasn't I there. Was, I, was, I was part of the council, obviously, you should know that passed that um, thing, and it was obviously under Chung's, when Chung was chief. Um, we, was it under him? It wasn't. It wasn't under him. Yeah. 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 To no cars home? Yeah. Was it? yeah, was yeah. Right. So, but it was because of him. <laughs> <laughs> because of us driving to the thing. But anyway, we we have GPS now. We're well, no, I, I, I get in the, the chief's side. So, I get now, so now if Adrian says, you know, I was run off the road by the dump, and I came into town and he's getting a hot chocolate, we can go and look at the GPS and say, yeah, you were. What the heck did you do? So we have a, a, a way to check and to see, you know, what, what, that, what it does. And we, that GPS is actually very sophisticated. He could get alerts if, if they go above 70 miles an hour. He could get alerts if they break really quickly. He can get alerts for all this stuff. So we can get in there and we can make these things where... We will monitor that kind of that kind of stuff. Right now, we use it basically where we're like, hey, you know, why was he out in you know wherever? We go look at that. But we have GPS now where I think we can kind of police the police. Yeah. I, I don't mind. I don't mind that. I don't mind that at all. A lot of agencies have gone through GPS because of that reason. They, it's transparency and it's accountability, and that's what we want. But the thing is, is that it also the same, it, it's the same kind of concept with, with the cameras. A lot of officers don't like cameras. Why? 
uh, it, it invades my privacy. I can't do what I want. But you know what it also does? It protects the town from liability. You cannot dispute video. You cannot dispute GPS. If that officer's driving at 80 miles an hour, and I ask him, hey, why are you driving 80 miles an hour from court back here? What, what, what was the, the reason here? I messed up. Okay, well, here's your mess up. Here's your written first time. One more. Guess what? Car goes away. The take-home policy was designed to provide that extra security for cities. By having officers having their cars at their home, you living in the <coughs> area made everybody feel more safer. That's what the take-home car started as. And then it became an incentive. And then they found out that it even worked better because they found that officers that took their vehicle home maintained their vehicles better, kept them cleaner, and they were far more responsible than individuals that just went to a station and picked up a car and what we used to call hot seating, took somebody else's car. Because they said, well, I don't have to worry about it. I'll let the other officer worry about the oil change. That's what that take home car program did. And that's why I was proposing it to re-implement that and make it official to bring that draw of the officers. Forget of what happened in the past to the abuse. Now we're more accountable here. We have the system. We have the monitoring myself. We have the GPS to back us up. And any any call that is emergency, it's documented <coughs> by, by TCSO. We're going to tell them. I'm going, I'm running code from Estancia over here. I got an emergency. I'll be running code. You just told the whole county what you're doing. And if something happens, you are you're you're covered. <laughs> As long as you have your emergency equipment on, that's that's pretty much how you run your emergency. I think what got to me was I'm repeating myself. As a governing body, at least he couldn't do it because he would be a rolling corn. But he could have told Dennis, call Adrian, call the Ernest. That's also a rolling corn. So we would have to bring it to council. But or I take full responsibility. I think you could have been able to ask me. Right. Yeah, because they've been taking them for a while. How many meetings have we? Uh, started, I have not. When did you get hired? Do you know? Uh, <laughs> 925. 925, so yeah. You know, common courtesy, that's what, what gets to me. It's common courtesy we should have been told. Or even you well, could have gone and said, this is what we're doing. I, I, under, I understand your concern, uh, Council. <coughs> like I said, the mayor, I spoke to him about it. He approved it, and I assumed at this point that it was, it was done. And I will take responsibility as well, because I'm here to serve you all. But I also should be given that, that, that uh, discretion as a department head to make a decision that affects the operations of this agency where it's going to bring professionalism and stability to this agency that was so needed in the past. And I thought it was a good move on, on, on the mayor's part. Just like he said, when he hired, there were certain things that we needed to fix. I'm fixing those things. I got my, my fingers everywhere, but the thing is, is that the big items, the big things that I feel that are really, really important, I'm going to come to you all. I'm going to ask you, through the mayor, what do you think? What do we propose here? How do we do that? Because as a department head, you have to manage your, your, your department in a, in a certain way. And those were one of those uh, instances. So I take full responsibility as well. That's my thing. We should have. Yeah. No, I agree. <laughs> if I was on the council, I probably would have. Um, I would probably be saying the exact same thing that you are right now. So if you want to apologize. Um, like I said, huh? You really forgot where you came from? I know. I forgot my roots. I forgot my roots. I apologize. I, uh, He's forgetting the little persons. Uh. <laughs> Not that at all. It's just, you know, like I said, I'm just we have a new chief. You know, I wanted to give him, you know, that ability to, to be able to make decisions where it helps the department and grows it. So I agree, and we should have told you, you know, even if we implemented it, we should have just let you guys know. 
I apologize. Um, I left it to Facebook to do that. Uh, I will not let that happen again. <laughs> yes. if, if I can just say, uh, myself, I think it's a good idea that they do take the car home. But the fact is that before they were parking their cars here, there was no vandalism going on on their cars. As soon as that they got orders to start parking cars, there was vandalism going on. Sometimes it's 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 a benefit that you get that people don't vandalize the cars are not there. It doesn't matter where you park them, you know. And even like us, when we had our city truck that we can we couldn't take them home. Uh, people were going and and taking batteries, still in the gas and this and that. Since we've been taking our trucks home again, all that stopped. So. I think that for that reason, myself, I, I think that it's a good idea for them to take it. Dave, I get your point. Chief, I get your point. You know, <coughs> I get everybody's point, but I just don't want to let this slide. Oh, oh, no. just mm -hmm. this. I just want to let you know where yes. we're coming from. No, I, I got okay, so when I'm, I'm pointing here at Mr. Borrieta. Okay. Uh, he, well, at one time, we, we were told he let the land, Rio Rancho, forever. So well, we told him it's in Berlin. Then we found yeah. out he's parking in Las Vegas. This is the whole reason for the thing. Then all of a sudden, he actually lived in Rio Rancho, and he was parking his car in Las Lunas, where he was prior parking his car in Berlin. So it was just a giant going reason. to the take home. Yeah. Is he going to be able to take his car a fifty mile radius? Not to Rio Rancho. Not to Rio I'm Rio. not saying no. to Rio I don't Rancho. Think we should do fifty. I think it should be lower because it's going to be close to the Oh, I can just drive a job. I think it should be a little bit lower. Where the people are like, well, maybe I should, maybe I should look for a home in Mount Air. You know, we want the people to move in Mount Air. We don't want them to go. Out. Is it Celsius right. dead? Is it Celsius dead? I think so. 2044. 2048? Yeah. I myself don't think to quarter. We say the 50 mile radius and then, okay, go up to Los Lunas, that's what, 60 miles? 50 more miles. Well, it depends on how, okay, so let's first clarify this, because it depends on how you, you, do it. If you do it on a map, 50 miles is 50 miles, but really it's 70 miles going around all the little twists and turns. So it has to be 50 miles on a road from one to another. Does that make sense? Because like, if you look at Albuquerque, I mean, Kernan Air Force Base is probably what? 50 miles from us? Yeah. But in reality, you drive to Kernan Air Force Base, you're looking at 83, 80, you know, I don't know, just throwing that out there. It's like more than 30 because you're going through all the mountains, you're going through Blue Springs Hill. So the 50 miles has to be clarified as in road miles or miles on a geographical map. And there's another option that we can do if the officer lives outside the 50 miles radius, as we call it. A lot of agencies do is they pick a halfway point. TCSO, for their officers that live in Rio Rancho, they were leaving their vehicles at the Edgewood uh, uh, Police Station. Uh, and that's what we started station. with him, yeah. right? Well, when I first got hired, I was allowed to drive it all the way to Albuquerque. That's where my house is on. And, and I did that for a short period of time, and then they changed it to where I had to drop off the vehicle in Las Lunas and switch to my own personal vehicle and drive from Las Lunas to Albuquerque. But See, I myself don't see to where we should have to do that, take a vehicle all the way to Slunas and then park it and then, and then go on your own vehicle all the way to Albuquerque or something like that. Or is it parked that? I mean, now we're going back to what David was saying. The car is parked in the, in the parking lot out there. Now there's going to be vandalism or something. Where do you go? You know, that's, that's, yeah. you know I mean, it can happen at a police station. Oh, yeah. we, all, we know that. And it can happen in your own Yeah, your own they're not responsible. I mean, I've talked yeah. to the commander and they said, you guys are welcome to park your car here, but here's yeah. the deal. You park at your own risk. We're not going to be responsible if anything happens yeah. to your unit. Because they park their vehicles inside, and we're not allowed because we're not sheriff's companies. So there's a there's a trade-off there. Some agencies don't care. They'll say, yeah, park your car here, but you got to park it on where the visitors park. You can't park inside their confined areas. That's I myself don't see that. I myself that if you're not able to take it all the way to your home, be responsible for it. I really don't see that. Leave it in a parking place at Walmart or somewhere or wherever, you know, and then in the morning I'll pick it up and you know, ain't no tell what can happen during that time. And that's where you stipulate in your case yeah. so, car contract all those stipulations. 
have to make them count. So if you do 50 road miles, not 50 miles, but 50 road miles, that's Belen, that's Moriarty, and anywhere in between. 50 miles, not road miles, <laughs> includes probably Los Angeles. Probably even parts of Albuquerque, like I said, Fernando Air Force Base. I, don't, I, don't, I mean, I don't know exactly, but we're right across the mountain. It's, you know, if you go with a straight line, it may be within the little part. Of it. Yeah, yeah so, that's the way that, that would be. So, yeah. I mean, if, if you want someone that lives in Belen that can work here or lives mm -hmm. anywhere in between Belen and here, but I agree, I, I agree with you. I, I would rather them take them home than to another police department agency. I don't know. I just, uh, to me, I, I totally see what you're saying. Because if they can drive to another police department agency and switch vehicles and then come here, why can't they just do it here? I mean, yeah. Yeah. really. Exactly. You know? That is, that is true. <clears throat> but I know that David said we used to park the equipment in the yard and forget it. Yeah, people know. They'll see the car. Just, look at the reports in Albuquerque and, and throughout the state. They know that we carry weapons in the car. They know we carry equipment. That's what they want. And that's the first thing when they see a police car by itself in a parking lot. That guy's got weapons, whether you do or don't. But if it's parked in your garage, it's parked in your front yard, they're going to know. Yeah, a cop lives there, but you come out to his property, it's going to be a little... Well, they'll study it. They'll keep looking at that vehicle. They know, okay, nice time to go check it out. Yes, sir. And I, I believe it even happened here where they busted the window and some vehicle over here at the shop. But, yeah. I remember somebody saying something about a window was busted. You know, even at that, you know. No, I, I totally agree. I'm, that's why I'm I'm asking for your approval to continue that, but I, I feel it's a lot more viable for the officers to take it home, take care of them. They abuse it, take the car, and pull it. They see it as one of the benefits themselves. You yes. Know? yes, sir. That is correct. I, I, I think you can give you know, if we're going to say 50 miles, you know, I I go by the 50 miles, no? Yes, sir. And that other real rancho, who was it? <laughs> to me, I found out where he actually lives. He lives in Albuquerque. He's within the 50 miles. Oh. I would say, that, to me, I think if we get somebody from Berlin, I would say only as far as Berlin. Yeah. Not Las Lunas. And then if we hire somebody from the other direction, not all the way to Edgewood. I would then, say, I would that say, would be discriminatory then. Because then we're discriminating one guy from another. He still lives in Torrance County. No, if you do a mile radius, more road mile radius, so road miles to Belen is 43. Road miles to Moriarty is 40. So if you do 45, if you do 45, then you are, it's, it's right there. It's Belen to Moriarty. And if you go any more, it's going to be probably more miles. I don't know how many miles is it from Moriarty to Edgewood? Like eight or nine or two? Less than seven. Less than seven miles. Seven miles. <laughs> so well, it's, it's, it's 53.7 to Las Lunas from here yeah. and 49.7 to Edgewood from here. So if you do 45, then you turn off. Two miles. Yeah. <laughs> And that's another thing too. I mean, are we really gonna be like, you can't go that extra two miles? Are we really gonna do it from 50 to 45? <laughs> I mean, I guess we could. But so you, want, you want to go? You want to go on a radius then instead of the road miles? Road then? No, road miles. Road miles. Road miles. Road miles. You Google mm -hmm. from. Under police department to their address, and it has to be within that city mile. And unfortunately, it's not, and you can't take it. Yeah, I think he's not doing, not to allow it. And again, we have to be stringent on the policies. Uh, you know, one of the big things that we can't monitor, unfortunately, is smoking in a vehicle. And I do not like smoking in a vehicle. There's so no way of monitoring it. If you, if there are heavy smoker, you can smell it anymore. No. Oh God, yeah. So, but you know, things like that they need to come into play. You can't. Yeah. The vehicles need to be taken care of very well. Yeah, all it's these, not your personal vehicle. All these new cars and, and all that, um, they are, are nice cars, and the town has done very well on that. 
And like I said, that policy for the take home is to be very stringent on abuse, the maintenance, it'll include the maintenance, it'll include everything. If you abuse it, you get your car taken. First offense, you get written up, that goes in your personnel folder. Second offense, then, it, then your car gets taken away. That usually attracts, it keeps people from doing that because they're, they're going to realize, well, geez, you know, this is a privilege. I'm getting a, a vehicle. I can go to my home. And then they mess it up because I'm going to get stupid thing. That's the thing that we have to really enforce, and that's my responsibility. Because we're in a non-smoking environment, and that, that car belongs to the town and not near. Yes, they shouldn't be smoking in that vehicle. So the key changes, like I said, to the advertisements are $13 for un, uh, uncertified, 17 starting for certified, take home unit within 50 miles, and no bonus for uncertified because we're jump starting their career. Those are the major changes that we've added to these advertisements. Any other questions? <laughs> Questions from the audience? Alright, do I have a motion? Well, I'll go ahead. A 50 mile thing, you know, it's, it's sticky. You can kind of make a, like you said, you know, you got to have some two miles. <clears throat> everybody just looked at maps and everybody had a different mile radius to be. to be. Yeah, that's the more you argue. You know, I mean, you say it's got to be ironclad. Who's map you're going to go out? Does the government do you use Bing? I just did. The county, no, the county requires Bing. You have to use Bing. They won't allow Google Maps. So maybe some county commissioners establish what web map they're going to use. You know, once you do that, you know, and I know Google's pretty legit. I think if we put the, okay, let's do this. Pull up the phone. <laughs> Go to Google Maps. Go to Mount Air PD, Mount Air Police Department. <laughs> and then search to Moriarty Police Department. And what mileage you got? What'd you get? What'd you get? What'd you get? No, there you go. <laughs> make sure that you're the thing is that you said you all got different things out pretty well it's probably because you put in different things for different like you know what I mean you have if you put in a, a straight address and a straight building you're gonna get the same it's not gonna be different by any means trust me I have to do that 62 <laughs> All right. So 50 miles. That's the So, wow. Yeah, you, guys have that. you guys can approve no. this, or you can change it. It's up to you. No, I, I, I'm, I'm fine with it. I just wanted to get my point across. You know, if something if you guys abuse it, this is coming back to the table again. Yes, absolutely. The the uh, take home car program. Uh, I'll draw up all the parameters for it, and they will be good. <coughs> For everything, it'll include maintenance, mileage, uh, any any type of abuse. What it covers as long as it's fair, because we can't discriminate from one person to the next. Because then we put ourselves in a torque camp situation. So it's got to be fair, straight across. This is the 50 mile radius we have. This is 50 miles according to road mile, Bing map, however way we want to assert it. We have to tell the applicants. And, and the employee that, that this is how we're doing it. And this, and, and he's absolutely right. So when you put that 50 miles, if someone lives 51 miles oh, yeah. away, we can't make that exception. Yeah. No, it was 50. Because then what's going to happen is someone's going to come and it's going to be 53 miles. And they're going to be like, well, you did it for the 51. <laughs> you have to set it. And that's just it. There's no changing it. If it's 51, you're done. 
The balloon fiesta the park is out of limits. <laughs> letting you know right now. Fifty. Well, they can bring a balloon. <laughs> so where does Freddie live at again? <clears throat> no, I don't even think he knows where Freddie is. <laughs> Freddie, do you know where you live? The secret. No, not just, no. not just out of information. The sheriff department here in Torrance County had this was out. They made all their officers that live not in Torrance County. They live in Albuquerque, wherever they live. They made them park it at that station in Edgewood. Yeah, and I just don't like that because to me, I just... Well, they, 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 they did it for a while, but here's what happened. Office, the deputies started quitting on them and said, wait a minute, why is it that the sheriff, yeah. under sheriff, and the big wigs could drive their cars unlimited anywhere, but we have to park our vehicle? So they came up with a plan. They said, okay, you go beyond the 50 mile radius as we established, we're going to deduct from your paycheck about a dollar fifty per pay to offset costs for gas. Yeah, so, that's just getting too complicated. So that being, oh yeah, it gets very complicated because guess what? That person has to report that in their income tax as a cost, of, uh, some kind of uh, um, capital loss because now they're having to pay out of their own pocket. So in, in order to avoid all that, the sheriff's department does now as a recruiting to get officers, I mean deputies, there is no restriction. There's guys that are living in Rio Rancho that are deputy sheriffs that work here in Torrance County. They took it out because they felt that if we're going to do this, we're going to do it straight across the board. Either it's 50 or not, or just get rid of it and there is no restriction. That's where, that's where it comes down to. Yeah, I, I'm not in favor, I don't know what you guys, I mean, you guys can vote that way, I'm not in favor of, of doing the police departments. I just think that Number one, one of the things that benefits, like David said, is when you have it at home, less crime because you're right there. But just because it's at another police station, I mean, people can park in Mount Air. There's not a police officer always on duty. What happens if the car gets destroyed? Who's responsible? I mean, I'm sure it would be the insurance, but still. Do you get what I'm saying? I just think there's too many dynamics with that. I think it's either home or here. And it's a, and it's a set, set, 50 miles. If their house is at 50.7, they'll be like, if their house is at 51.2, <laughs> So with all this driving now, so they're going to be filling up at the maintenance department or what? Oh, yeah. 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 That's how it's going Yeah. Because yeah. I, I don't think we ever get any credit cards, right? Any mm -hmm. no. Yeah, we don't need them. We can fill up at maintenance and... It's up to the officer always maintain a full tank in that vehicle for emergencies. And <coughs> so they spent about two hours on this? I think all the talking points are made pro and con, and just like Adrian said, it was a policy to be, and then it just wasn't. And it was, and it was. Without saying nothing, you know, that's. Mm -hmm. well, well, that's the the yeah. Yeah. yeah, because it was a policy. So the, yeah, it should have been on this one too, right? <laughs> right? I mean, Yes, we'll put it on the next one. Just gotta be careful with that. Well, you have, anyway, you have policies well, actually, I didn't put it on this agenda because I went to the vault first. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't anticipate. I didn't want to guess how you had the vault. So you didn't know you were going to get it from both <laughs> girls, from the and myself? No, I didn't. <laughs> I thought we were the crew. <laughs> <laughs> That's done. We were supposed to yell at the We were supposed to yell at the Let's go ahead and uh, yeah, I got one I decide on. Don't get me involved in this. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I make a motion to approve the changes to the police department uh, advertisements, uh, including the pay and the, the take home vehicle policy. I'm just trying to get my point across, you know what I mean? I'm not going to just let it slide, but there's a whole reason we... Well, that's what I'm saying. You know, there was a policy that we didn't... It wasn't brought to the council, but that's what I'm saying. Do we have a second? Closer to... All right, I have a motion on the floor by Adrian to approve the changes to the police department advertisements. A second by Richard. Roll call, Richard. Four. Juanita. Four. Adrian. Four. Ernie. Four. Motion passes. Yes, sir. 
All right, approval of promotion of Carl Archuleta to interim public works supervisor. We actually have a executive session about that, so if you guys want. I motion that we table and vote on that after the executive session. No second. Okay, we motion to table item number 14. Approval of promotion of Carl, of Carl Archuleta to interim public works supervisor. The second by Adrian, correct? Uh, <coughs> Four. Juanita? Four. Adrian? Four. Four. Chief, you yes. have moved there in like an hour. Okay. <laughs> You're next. Am I still up? You're still up. <laughs> Stay there. <laughs> okay. I, I knew the job was going to be tough, but I'll make it. Uh, that's okay. I like challenges. Uh, November crime stats. Uh, officers responded to approximately 14 calls for service regarding other than the traditional calls, what we call them other calls, suspicious persons. People just wanted information and one illegal dumping, which uh, uh, the individual was cited for. Awesome. Uh, in the last uh, two weeks of this month, we have issued over 20 citations for various violations, which resulted in several PA fines and municipal court appearances. We're going to keep the judge busy. Uh, one DV call, no rest, a verbal dispute only. Two crash reports for this month. No burglaries since we've been in business. We've been enforcement, we've been very active out there. The burglaries have gone down, and the subjects that are responsible for most of those crimes are still in custody. And I've been told by the DA's office that they're going to be going to prison. Uh, that's what they're dealing with. Uh, we dealt with several individuals. Uh, uh, I'm going to call them mental, mentally disabled. Uh, on crimes, but it's to ensure it's professional and unbiased uh, response, we still take the reports for that because in, in their heart they believe that there is a crime and we have to address those situations. That is the report for this month, and it's not even over yet, but uh, that's a good one. Uh, code enforcement, uh, I had the, um, Mr. Aguilar draw me up a um, uh, information regarding the Rosemary Lovato, Sylvan family, and uh, Mateus Teresa Franco, which has already been addressed. Uh, in that case, uh, no action has yet been taken for abatement. The other ones that I'm listing down here are past due. Uh, Marvin J. Watts, Pauline Lamford, Josie Felipe Torres, Renee Roman and Palma Old Property in Acoma. Those are still pending and they're past due as of October the 7th, 2018 for some type of abatement. When you say they're pending and past due, that means that we've already sent the letter process? Yes, sir. Everything's been done. Yeah, everything's so been done up to that point. We so. need to advertise and put it into the paper and get that on the agenda. That is the other two, um, the other, so with Mary, uh, with, uh, what's her name? Rosemary. Rosemary. Yes, Lovato. So she, um, was no longer owned the house, it belonged to the bank, but the bank hadn't recorded anything. So the, according to the county, she still owned it. <coughs> she does not. She says she has nothing to do with the property. She doesn't want nothing to do with the property. I gave her a week to kind of, you know, see what she wanted to do. So that belongs to the bank. So anything that we do would be against the bank. So. Any questions for Chief? So there hasn't been any interest in the, in the opening two jobs yet? Or? The interest that I've done is for the uncert. We did test uh, several individuals for the uncertified. One of the candidates will be interviewed tomorrow on his oral board. And then once he passes the oral board interview, which will consist of the mayor, uh, town council, myself, and then an outside, I'm trying to get one of the sheriff's uh, lieutenant or the under sheriff himself to come out. Once he passes the oral board and is recommended for uh, approval, then it will be set to you all for the final approval for the uncertified position. The next academy date is January the 29th, meaning all his backgrounds, documentations, medical, psychological, all that has to be done before January 11th, which is the deadline for admission to the academy. Uh, on the certified, we have done a lot of inquiries, but where they filter out was on the pay. 
They, they were certified officers, but they felt that the pay was too low uh, based on their experience, because everybody throws that at you, well, depending on experience. What do you start at for certified, and how high do you go? So we have to, now that we're moving in that direction, now we have leverage. You can say this is our starting for certified, this is our ending top pay, this is the incentives we offer. <coughs> so that's going to generate some more uh, people. One of the things that uh, Chief Reyes implemented is testing, both written and physical tests, yes. prior to any of all this stuff. Because if the guy can't pass the written or uh, physical test, he's not going to pass it when he gets to the academy, so no sense hiring him in the first place. It's, it's quite impressive, actually, so we want to implement that in all of our departments eventually. The, the, oh. test, the test that uh, Dennis is talking about is, is a national test. It's used by Santa Fe, Sandoval uh, sheriffs are thinking about it, and it's used by the, mostly the northern agencies. And it tests reading, comprehension, grammar, it teaches the basics. It's designed for a person that is not a cop to be able to pass this test with a 70% or better and be able to comprehend because when he goes to the academy, they're going to be bombarded with constitutional law and all that, and they have to pass the Pope test, which is a very long uh, test in itself. The physical assessment was done. I give credit to an a, a older gentleman that applied. He is from here, from Mountain Air. He made everything else, but he just could not pass that run. And that's where they kill all the applicants, is on that run, because by Cooper standards and LEA standards, you have to make a mile and a half run under 1454. If you do not do that, you're not going to pass the academy because each phase of the academy, they test you when you get in, they test you in the mid, and they test you exiting. And as you go through all these testing, you even get better. <coughs> this gentleman was, he gave it all. Let me tell you, I thought I was going to have to call you in minutes, but he was good. <laughs> he was good. He made everything else, but that, that he just could not pass the, the running. But he did apply to ACO. So I got a good candidate for an ACO position because he is willing to do that. And, and his background is good. And the certifies, uh, are they coming from other municipalities or are they required? Uh, there's no certified officers because of the pay. But uncert, I had a good response with uncertified. And out of the candidates that uh, responded, to the email, responded to the letters we sent out, was the final candidate that we're going to interview tomorrow. And he's part, probably the best candidate uh, on the written, physical, everything. Yeah. That, that's going to be the standard for all certified or uh, uncertified, is we implement these tests to determine, instead of wasting our money and time, if you can't pass a written in a, in a very basic test, you're not going to get hired here. It eliminates all that. No questions on the audience. Audience? <coughs> so um, you're talking about these positions that have been open, these two positions, right? Is one of these for the school resource officer? The school resource officer is, is I've discussed with the mayor um, on that, is that I would like to see the school resource officer be hired by the schools <coughs> themselves, and then we commission him or her. Mm -hmm. They have to be certified officers and they have to have the training of SRO or be able to complete it because it is a tough training. If I can convince the superintendent of the school to pay for the salary, then we can commit a full-time or part-time SRO to the program because right now what we're doing is if we, if we take that officer that is certified, not everybody is cut out to be an SRO. It's a, special, it's a specialty. They might hate it and some people just love it by eliminating that and forcing it upon somebody else I would propose rather to have a full-time or part-time SRO that's not our employee only commission so you're through. talking about it being a, a school employee that the school is putting the entire bill for but you commission them so the agreement that the town and the school had to jointly pay for that is is no longer uh, well, we're, well we would discuss that yeah it's, it's, it hasn't been made officially. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It hasn't been. We're, we're it has to, to, to come to council. Now will come to council. Well, I'm going to talk to Don, and then I'll come to council yeah. approval. And, yeah. well, well, so when are we planning on it coming to council? Because we 
we've been already a while without a school officer, and I've had several drug incidents occurring as we speak. Well, the thing is, is that uh, I have to meet with the superintendent. We have to meet. So we'll meet with the superintendent, yeah. but yeah, um, in the cases with drugs, we would just call regular PD. Yes, yes. Just call a regular officer and we'll deal with it. Uh, I do remember that, that you all wanted a canine to go through the um, uh, schools to do a training. That's what I'm going to call it. It's a training exercise. I put out a word uh, with Chief Pacetas of uh, State Police to see if I could borrow one of their canine dog units to come out and do a training exercise. Of course, if they find something that's different, but just for presence, because the county doesn't have a canine. SP is my is my closest resource. So I am I, I am working with that because I think that would be a good deterrent for uh, kids bringing in the narcotics into the school. So uh, you said you having drugs up there. Are you calling a police officer when you suspect? Right now it's been suspicion, and we have not called the resource officer. Now yeah, that's the thing, if, if you have a suspect, if you really believe in, you can re still report it, you can still make a report, even though it's just suspicion, and we'll kind of, we'll take it in and, and we'll use it as data, but if you actually have an offender, then yeah, you do have to make that call, and we'll, we'll handle it, and if we're not available, SO is, is very, has been very good to us. They know we're short. They're short too, but they told us if we're not on duty and they and somebody needs us here, they will respond. Actually, this may be a dumb question. Yeah. Um, so, um, <laughs> when you're an underage person, let's say 14, 15, and you have tobacco on you, I mean, obviously you're not supposed to until you're 18. Can you get cited for that? Yes, you have to be 18. <laughs> So then you'll probably get phone calls from me daily. <laughs> That's no joke. Yeah, no. You can't cite you can't cite that individual because uh, state law requires that you be 18 to buy and purchase uh, tobacco. Falls under USD. And that may be a deterrent instead of something that yeah. Know, yeah, they can be cited for ticket. it. Yeah, absolutely. And then plus bringing tobacco on school. Or you have a policy that prohibits tobacco and alcohol drugs, you can enforce that. Because you do know that schools are considered safe drug zones nationwide. Any person bringing narcotics, weapons into a school area zone can be charged federally. What about chewing tobacco? We'll leave you out of it. <laughs> but yeah, any tobacco products on a, on a minor Yes, it, it is enforceable. Oh. Absolutely. Under the age of 18, you're a minor, correct? Yes. That's how old you are. That is correct. If, if mom and dad say, I let them smoke, well, you can do that at your house, but not on the school property. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. We'll go with Don while she's out, right? She's, she's out for the next two days. days. We'll go with her next two days. Definitely. Yeah. I think, I think it would save us money. I think it would be a win-win situation if we can get the school to do the SRO. <laughs> well, the benefit of that also is yeah. the retirement. The retirement, yeah. we, we can be retired.